In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add keyboard shortcuts to your Flutterflow app. This means your users can press a key and then some logic runs, like this dialog box opening. Now, keyboard shortcuts are just a type of trigger, and they're defined on the root widget in the Action Flow editor. And this can be the root widget of a page or a component. And I'll show you an example of a component in a minute, but let's start here. So let's say I wanna have a keyboard shortcut so that when the user presses the C key, it opens up a new issue. So I'm on my root widget right here, and let's go into my action flow editor, and you can see this option right here on shortcut press. So let's select that. And now Flutterflow is waiting for me to type a key or combination of keys that will execute this launch. So I'm gonna press the C key and accept it. Now I just have a normal action flow editor where I define whatever logic I want executed. Now, if you press the wrong key and want to redefine which key it was, you can just come up here and type a different key, but we're good with this. So let's just add some simple logic right here. I want a custom dialogue. There we go. And I've got a component set up already called new issue dialogue. Beautiful. I want this aligned to the top and that's it. Let's go test it out. Beautiful. The next let me show you how to add a shortcut inside a component. So maybe I wanna give the users the ability to press enter to actually create this issue. So let's go do that. So I'm gonna to navigate to my new issue component. There it is. And just like on a page, I come to my root widget right here, go over to your action flow editor and on shortcut press. The beauty of doing it this way is that the shortcut is scoped to this component. This way you can keep your project more tidy because you won't have a million keyboard shortcuts on that one page. So here, I I want to bind this logic to the enter key. Okay, that's great. Now for this demo, I've stored the data in an app state variable. So I'm just going to update that. And then I want to close that dial. Beautiful. Let's test this out. Okay, great. Next, let me show you how to define a keyboard shortcut with a combination of keystroke. And to do that, let's introduce a navigation mode. Like maybe I wanna be able to navigate through all of these issues. And the first step is to design a navigation mode. Now to track that, we're gonna need a variable. So I've defined a Boolean right here. So when it's true, we're in navigation mode and when it's false, we're not. Next, let's go to our home screen. We'll define another keyboard shortcut here. So let's add another on shortcut press. And this time we're gonna do command enter and accept. And now we just wanna toggle that variable we set up. So we're looking for an app state variable and we're looking for this navigation mode. We want it to toggle so that this control or command enter both turns it on and turns it off. Okay, so the navigation mode is on, but we haven't indicated that to the users in any way. Now we're gonna do that by adding a purple border similar to this around each of those issues. But to do that, we're gonna need a variable where we hold the ID of the issue that's actually selected. So let's go add that variable. And we've got it right here, selected item. And we're gonna need a function that selects the first issue so that we can get that ID to put it in here. And here it is, this just takes in our issues and returns the ID of the first item that has a status to do. Okay, great. Now let's run this function so we can get an ID to put in our selected ID variable. So let's come back to our app state variable. Let's add another field. It's our selected item. Let's set the value and we'll run our function. We're called find first item and we'll pass in our list of issues. There we go. Beautiful. Now, this wouldn't be complete if we couldn't arrow through these issues. So let's go do that. Now, to arrow through these issues, we're going to need a function that selects the next item, whether that's the next one down or up or left or right. So I have four functions here that takes care of each of that logic. Now we just need to run that function to get that next ID for each one of our arrow shortcut keys. So let's go back into our action flow editor. So here we just define shortcut keys like normal. So shortcut press. Let's start with down, we've got our arrow down and accept that. And now we can just bind all that logic. So we'll add an action. We want to update that app state variable. We want to update our selected item and we want to run that function we just defined. So this will be our down function. And let's just add in our issues list right here. We also need to pass in a currently selected ID because we have to reference that when we find the next one. Let's come in here go here, app state, and selected item. Beautiful. And just do that for the rest. Okay, great. Can't wait to see what you'll build with keyboard shortcuts, and we'll see you in the next video.